Okay, so if I offered people $100 now or $100 later, I would expect people to take the money now. I mean, it's the same $100, right? So why take it later when you could just have it now? Makes sense. Well, what about $100 now versus $1,000 later? Well, there's a lot of things you have to consider. How much do you need that $100? How much are you willing to wait? How much time do you have to wait? These are all factors that you need to consider. How can we solve this with economics? As we will unravel how economics solves this dilemma, we will uncover a paradox of the democratic political process. Let's begin. Remember, video notes are in the description. So right here, we have what I call the time discounting game. You have two buttons. You can take the instant gratification. This gives you a instant reward of 10 you can have now, or you can have delayed gratification. And so this gives a reward of one every following day. So this means that tomorrow you get a reward of one, then the next day you get a one, and then every day following you will get one as a reward. So you would like to maximize the reward you get. However, you're going to die eventually. And so right here, we have mapped out X is the probability of death. So we have a death rate and percentage. We have 100% on the one side, and then we have zero all the way here. Both of these are a calculation of the expected reward. Now, very simply, if we go with the first button, choice one, we will get a simple reward of 10. However, if we go with the other one, we have to consider the probability that we will live to see tomorrow and get that reward and then keep on living every day following. So with these calculations right here, it shows us we should take the delayed gratification all the way up till we have a 9.091% chance of death. Below that, then our expected reward falls below 10 for choosing choice two. However, before that, if we have, let's just say, a 1% or a 5% chance of death, our expected reward is greater than 10 if we choose choice two. So let's get into a framework to kind of analyze this idea of time discounting. So time discounting is just a technical way to measure how much you value now as compared to the future. See, so if you're starving, for example, you will have a higher rate of time discounting because you can't wait. You will literally die if you do not eat food. Food today is worth a lot more than food in a week's time because you won't be around to enjoy that food in a week's time if you are starving. Lower time discounting is partially a product of having your basic needs fulfilled. If you did not have your basic needs fulfilled, your time discounting will quickly rise, as is the case of many starving people. Furthermore, we have to understand that time discounting can exist for structural reasons. As we saw in the first demo, if you'll be dead, then the future matters less. Usually this is not necessarily the case, as people value other things than their own personal pleasure. They have family, they have things that they believe in organizations, causes, ideologies, religion, that cause them to value other things than their own personal pleasure. But so these structural reasons that we see behind our time discounting is based on how much we are connected, how much the institutions incentivize us to be connected with the outcomes of our decisions in the future. In a business, if people in management aren't held to future consequences, those being benefits and costs, then that is going to impact on how they value those consequences. If you're only incentivized to maximize the present, then you will load all of your benefits now and push all the costs to the future. This is could be a major problem in how we organize and structure businesses and will increase the amount of time discounting that the person on the job will do because the structure incentivizes them to put their present desires ahead of 
the future cause. So to help us kind of organize our thoughts here about how time discounting works, we should ask a simple question. Would you rather have a dollar now or a dollar in a year? Now, they're both the same dollar, but if you take it now, you can use it within the year or use it after the year is up. So it doesn't really hurt you to take it now. Now suppose I offer you a dollar now or a dollar and 25 cents in one year. Now just a question of how much you need the dollar now in comparison to the dollar 25 in the future's time. The value you would need to pay so that you will delay your gain by a year is your discount rate. It is the rate that you discount the costs and benefits for the future. We often give up money now for more in the future. The money paid as a return on investment is a signal to represent how much we discount future value over present value, such as, well, if we expect to make a 5% gain in a year, then that tells us that if we invested it right there, then our discount rate is less than 5%. We discount the future by less than 5%. So if somebody's willing to compensate us more than our discount rate by at 5% and ours is less than 5%, then we will choose to delay our consumption. Okay, so we're back into Desmos for another example. So we can choose between two different plans over the next 30 years. So these two functions right here are the benefit of the plan at X years into the plan. They are at the same or no cost. So there's no difference between how much cost we're paying. We just get the benefits. So we have to make a choice. Now, if we look at it right here, the total benefit of choosing the blue plan is greater than the total benefit of choosing the red plan. However, we have to wait a period of time before we can actually experience or realize those gains of the blue plan. So the question that we have to figure out is which plan is worth it. And so this is really just a question for discount rates. How much do we discount the future as compared to the present? Now, as we can see right here, if our discount is pretty low, if it's below 13.259%, then it's clearly better to choose the blue plan. We're willing to wait to realize those future gains. But if you look at something like the red plan, if we have needs, if we're discounting the future much more substantially, such that we need it now, then the red plan will clearly be the superior plan to choose. Right here we have a switching point. So as our discount rate goes, or as our desire for now as opposed to later, grows, the red plan becomes a better option, but at lower rates, the blue plan is the better option. Okay, so, so let's talk about the buttons are. Since pressing buttons is an abstraction, we introduced earlier to talk about time discounting and how it affects cost-benefit calculations. In the real world, there's many, many, many buttons we desire to press every day. So in order to save time, we appoint a button czar who is supposed to decide for us and make informed decisions about which button to press, as it is very hard pressing two buttons. So now that we've appointed our buttons are, the first thing that we should note is that the personal discount rate for a public official is not necessarily the same as the discount rate that the politician acts on in office. If you think about it, the likelihood to lose your position of power is a parallel to death, the same death that was discussed in the original time discounting game. If you hold the position for one day, that is equivalent to having a 100% death rate. Of course, there are other things to value than the benefits and costs of being the buttons are, but it will in fact shift your behavior. The lowest your discount rate can go is your personal rate, because this is set by how much how much you have to face the consequences. If your chance to lose power is below your death rate, then it's likely a lifetime position. If it is above your death rate, then your position will only be temporary. Thus, you can't really be sure that you will face, or it's much less likely that you will face the costs and benefits 
of future outcomes, the more that rises. So leaders who hold positions for life will discount future costs and benefits similar to their own personal preference. Leaders who face being replaced will be often incentivized to discount future costs and benefits more than they personally would prefer. Simply, those who are not in power cannot realize the benefits and costs of being in power. However, this leads to a paradox whereby making politicians more accountable and replaceable, they will exhibit a preference which is more favorable to short-term gain than would be typical of the population. However, a monarchical czar who rules over autocratically and for life apparently will behave much more in line with the preferences of some person. To qualify what I just said right here, this might not actually be a big deal if we unpack what this means. This seems much more surprising than it actually is. You and a monarch might have more aligned preferences in terms of short-term and long-term gain. You could still have differences and preferences where the monarch or the autocrat looks at you more of as an investment instead of what is in your own benefit. This could line up or this could be antagonistic. While the politician is more short-term focused, and this is a distortion away from your preference, he is in fact still serving you. So no system is perfect, but the power of a lifelong leader might be more prone to problems and less accountable than a monarchical or autocratic system. But like all economic stories I tell, they're only a small part of the truth. There's a lot of things going on, but this is something important to know. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. I hope to see you next time.